gentlemen and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and today we're talking about which is better, G-Sync or FreeSync? So this is going to be my opinion and because uh, I've been lucky enough to try both of the monos and I'll also give you an overview of the technology so you guys know if you aren't fully aware. So let's talk about what they do. So both of them are trying to fix kind of two issues. Um, that can really hurt immersion in games, especially in first-person shooters, and just the gameplay experience overall. Now, the first issue we're going to talk about is screen tearing, which is basically when the monitor's refresh rate, say, you know, 60 hertz, so 60 times a second, and the GPU's render rate, which is going to be varied, are unsynchronized. Uh, so this means that the monitor might only be partway through displaying a frame when the GPU sends another which means you get tearing when you know there's a new frame uh, being output while the old one is on the screen. It just it's it's two it's two on the screen at the same time basically it gives you tearing. Um, so that doesn't look very good at all, and it can really hurt immersion in a lot of games. Uh, I have a big problem with it. Most people do. They don't like it at all, and it just doesn't look very good uh, at all. However, there was a technology invented to fix that, which is called VSync, which you have most likely heard of. And VSync does fix it. You won't get tearing with VSync on. However, it brings a new problem. So what happens is it forces the GPU to wait until the monitor is basically ready for the new frame. Uh, the downside to that is that because it's set at a fixed interval, um, it causes lag because sometimes the monitor will force GPU to wait and wait and wait and then on the screen it's still just displaying the same image. Um, obviously this happens very fast, but it comes out as kind of lag and stuttering and it just generally doesn't look that good. So most people um, had to pick basically if you needed responsiveness, say if you're playing a more competitive first person shooter game kind of like CSGO or a uh, MOBA game like League of Legends or Dota 2 or an RTS game like StarCraft or whatever that you need responsiveness first, uh, then they just run VSync off. However, if they wanted a better kind of graphical experience uh, and it wasn't so much a competitive game, just like a fun game that you're playing through, uh, then they'd leave VSync on because they could probably just deal with the, the stuttering every now and again um, and they'd rather have that than the screen tearing. However, G-Sync and FreeSync are there to fix both of these issues and they both do. So you'll be happy to know that. <laughs> But how do they actually work? So we'll start off with G-Sync then, because that's the one that actually did come out first. So G-Sync fixes this by giving the GPU control of when the monitor is to refresh. That means there's no screen tearing because they're always synchronized and no stuttering because the graphics card isn't forced to wait. For G-Sync to work, however, though, it needs a proprietary chip. Proprietary. Proprietary? Proprietary. We got it in the end. Um, and you have to pay a licensing fee to NVIDIA and you can also only use NVIDIA GPUs as well from the GTX 650 Ti uh, boost and up. FreeSync achieves the same thing by letting the GPU control when the monitor is to refresh. However, it goes about it in a bit of a different way. So FreeSync is based on the Adaptive Sync Open Standard in DisplayPoint 1.2a and later versions in addition to the integrated uh, display controller inside of AMD's graphics processors. So what this means is that the AMD graphics card will handle it itself whereas G-Sync has to go through that chip we just talked about. So that's the main difference there. Um, because FreeSync relies on the integrated display controller in an AMD card, it means that FreeSync won't work with many older uh, AMD GPUs. So this is a lot more limiting. So the R7 260 and the uh, A6 7400K APU being the lowest uh, GPU and APU that you can use with it. And a lot of other GPUs from AMD's lineup, popular ones too, like the 280X, won't work with G-Sync, uh, G-Sync, FreeSync, because, <laughs> saying them too many times, uh, because of the older architecture of the uh, GPU. So what are they like to actually use? Well, as far as the G-Sync monitor went, the one I tested a while back was the uh, Asus Swift ROG, which is 27 inch, 144 hertz, uh, 1440p G-Sync display. And for the FreeSync side, I'm using uh, the BenQ XL 2730Z right now, which is also 27 inch, 1440p, 144 hertz, but FreeSync. 
And they're both fantastic. They both do exactly what they're supposed to do. I didn't see any screen tearing, stuttering, anything with either of them. They both do exactly what they're supposed to do. The games look fantastic. I tried it in a bunch of different games and they all look really good. So performance wise, I was very impressed with both and I can't say that one is better than the other. Some people have been going on about like ghosting with the FreeSync displays. I don't know. I haven't seen any of that. Still seems fine to me, and it's very hard to compare them. I think both of them do exactly what they're supposed to, and yeah, it's very good. They both they both do it very well. Now, uh, another thing to note though is that the G-Sync refresh rate range is from 30 hertz to 144 hertz, while with FreeSync it's 9 hertz to 240 hertz, which basically just gives monitor makers a little bit more flexibility, and it might come into it a little bit more in the future. But for right now, it doesn't mean too much, although. It is good, nevertheless. Um, and that's not to say you're going to see 9, nine hertz monitors in the future so <laughs> at all. So it's nothing to do with that. Now, another thing uh, good to note is that G Sync requires V Sync to be on, whereas Free Sync doesn't. And that will come into effect when your FPS drops below the minimum refresh rates that the two technologies support. But we're not really going to talk about that too much because it makes it a little bit too advanced in how I'd like to make this video. Um, and also the technology is still changing and how they handle it at this stage so it's probably not really wise to cover it right now because things might change in the near future. Oh, you guys are welcome to talk about it in the comment section down below and fill in people that may not really know. So that leads us now to the conclusion. Which one of these is better? So as I said, in the actual uh, use case, you know, the performance of them, they both do exactly what they're supposed to do and they both do it very well. Uh, I can't call it one way or the other because it's not like one did it better than the other or anything. They both are fantastic. There's no tearing, there's no stuttering. They're just really good and I really, really like them in that sense. So I can't really call it in that sense. However, we can talk about some of the other things around them and that way we can find which one is better. What's that, Teddy? Timmy fell down the well. Mmm, irrelevant. So, um, for this, I'm going to have to say, for right now, FreeSync is better. And uh, my reasoning for it is that it doesn't add any extra cost to the monitor or have extra licensing fees, unlike G-Sync, which needs the proprietary chip and a licensing fee to NVIDIA. It also doesn't restrict the monitor's features or display outputs. It has a wider refresh rate range, which isn't too big of a deal, but maybe uh, further down the road. And it also allows for VSync to be on or off, uh, which is also quite nice. However, one of the big drawbacks with FreeSync is that it's not really available on a wide range of GPUs or APUs. And that's where G-Sync is really coming into its own. Um, it can be used with a much wider variety of NVIDIA GPUs. Remember that these technologies can only be used by one side or the other. so. Uh, G-Sync can only be used right now with uh, NVIDIA graphics cards and, and FreeSync can only be used by, uh, with AMD GPUs or APUs. So that's really how I got to call it. It's FreeSync is better only because it achieves the same thing as G-Sync while doing it uh, in a less intrusive way, both to the consumer and that it won't cost as much. You know, you don't have to be paying for that chip and all the stuff which adds to the monitor cost. And also... Uh, that it doesn't restrict the monitor's features or display outputs or anything like that. So that's why I'm calling it right now. But in the actual performance, I can't actually pick a winner. And of course, all this is going to be changing down the road. So this is just my views for right now. And what is my consumer advice for you guys uh, who might be looking into this? Honestly, right now, I unless you really want it... Um, it's not really worth it to me at this stage. It's like the cherry on top of your uh, gaming rig or your gaming setup, you know, your battle station. It's it's good and it does add that little next level for enthusiasts to really enjoy. But it's not like this be all end all thing that's just going to change it, uh, change everything, you know. And it's you have to have it uh, at this stage. They're still quite expensive a lot of times. So I'd say wait maybe six months um, and then look at the market again and see kind of what's changed in that time and then maybe look into getting a FreeSync or a G-Sync display as I think there will be more competition by that stage hopefully and prices will have come down. But at this stage in New Zealand anyways, a lot of the time these monitors are really expensive and I don't think they're really worth it for the majority of users out there. Unless, you know, as I said, you just want that cherry on top and it's just to really finish off your battle station and make your gaming setup just absolutely perfect, then I'd say go for it. 
Now, I thank you all for watching this video. Please leave a comment down below uh, if you have anything to add to what I've said in this video or uh, if you have any opinions that might be different to my own. Please subscribe to Tech Showdowns. So I have lots more cool videos coming your way very soon. And like the video. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.